Hello and welcome to another episode of So Fly. Uh, my name is Mitch. We've got Aldo. Hello, hello. And we've got Yoma. Hello. And we've got another episode here. We're very excited to be chatting uh, to all of you about today with a very cool topic. Um, obviously, if you've seen the title, it's, it's all about striped marlin and billfish in general. So we're, we're pretty excited. But uh, let me just kick this off here bit of an intro. The Billfish Foundation was founded in 1986 with a mission of conserving billfish worldwide. Their keystone program was the traditional tagging program, which began in 1990. Today, it's grown to be one of the largest international billfish tagging programs in the world. Uh, most recently, two members, Peter and Jeremy from TBF, were involved with Costa in kicking off the Marlin Fly project, of course, which last episode we spoke all about with Hannah and Joe, who spearheaded this initiative. Um, and we got to learn more about the project itself. But today we're going to do more of a deep dive into striped marlin to learn more about these super incredible fish that we've never really talked about on the podcast uh, before. Uh, Peter Chai Bongzai is the director of conservation programs at the Bill Fish Foundation. He grew up in the Great Garden State of New Jersey and went on to get degrees at the University of Miami, Miami in marine science. He's worked at the Bill Fish Foundation for sev over 17 years. He's had the honor to serve and actively participate and hold appointments to regional fisheries management organizations such as the Highly Migratory Species Adv Advisory Panel, the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute as a board member, uh, ICCAT Advisory Committee, and IATTC General advisory committee. Uh, Jer Jeremy Higgs is the assistant director of the Center for Fisheries Research and Development at the University of Southern Mississippi. He grew up exploring nature and fishing in the Midwest and Great Plains. Uh, these interests fueled his curiosity in the aquatic world, which resulted in him studying marine biology and coastal sciences. He left the Midwest for warmer coastal climates and began his career as a fisheries biology biologist. Sorry. Uh, in this role, he has conducted studies on a variety of different topics, ranging from oyster reef restoration to sport fish management uh, to highly migratory species research and a little bit of everything else in between. We're super excited to be talking to these two today uh, because all of these topics are things that, you know, we sometimes touch on the show and know absolutely nothing about. Um, so very, very excited to talk to the pros. Uh, but today, both Peter and Jeremy, of course, join us here on SoFly. Fellows, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we appreciate it. Where are you guys uh, calling in from today? Uh, we're calling in from the Bahamas today, actually. What? Well, that's pretty exciting. I already knew that. Obviously, we're talking about <laughs> yeah, we already knew that. That's that's oh, my good. God, really? I know. What? <laughs> They're together. You guys wow. are together, obviously. Uh, you're, you're down at uh, a conference of some kind. What's the conference you guys are at? Uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're at the Gulf and, uh, Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute Conference. Uh, they're having their 76th. 76th, yeah. Annual yeah. conference, uh, luckily down here in the Bahamas, so oh, it's a awesome. place to be. It doesn't stink, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for real. Yeah, how's the, how's the, uh, what, how long you guys been down there for? Like, what day is it into the conference? I don't even know what day it is now. So what is the first day? <laughs> <laughs> the first you day lucky. Of the uh, oh, yeah. first day of the conference. Opening ceremonies and things last night, but first full day That's of the right. conference. Okay, and it so runs through uh, through the end of the week. So nice. Now, are oh, they right. doing, like, at this conference, you touch on a little bit of everything? Like, is it, is it you know, highly migratory species, inshore fisheries, and kind of everything? Yeah, it's everything. I mean, there'll, there'll be things from uh, from bottom fish, like uh, snapper, grouper, to bonefish, talking about management policies. Um, their, you know, colleagues from a number of other organizations uh, here that um, that deal with not only highly migratory bottom fish, uh, coastal species, but then looking at management and some policies of how they affect not only the fish itself, but really what's really interesting is the communities that are affected by it too. Mm. Um, and I feel like a lot of times, a lot of conferences, especially scientific ones, they'll focus only on the science mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. how the science is actually applied. Right. right to the right. people that are actually going to be directly or even indirectly affected. And I think that's what GCFI does a really great job of is they try to yeah, find that, that bridge there. And that's yeah. kind of like the billfish like foundations thing as well. Right. Obviously finding the bridge between the science and how it impacts people. Yeah. I mean, I mean, great job there. Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought there was dirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For Mitch, those of you, uh, what I was about to say, Mitch, if you ever need a, you know, yeah. hire, we can hire you for a publicist, you know. So, man, <laughs> he's, he's a copywriter. Can be a copywriter. Yeah. So, I mean, like, cool. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I like that. I like that. 
Yeah, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can watch Peter brush the dirt off his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's very cool. Um, um, well, I mean, that is kind of cool because we were chatting about, um, mm-hmm. you know, that with Hannah and Joe, like, you know, having that com- the community in, you know, in Mag Bay involved and, and how that, uh, you know, uh, impacts the community, which I, I know we're going to get to in the latter half of this uh, mm-hmm. this show. But um, But that's really neat. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes it ac- actionable, right? When it's like, there's yeah. one thing, it's like, I mean, and this is probably a good bridge because I'd love to just learn more about both of you guys, like how you got into, you know, the lines of work that you did and and, and where it all started from, you know, like um, I feel like the science and, and all of that, that stuff is interesting and, and it's cool to like learn about. Uh, it gets people excited, but when you can apply it, I mean, that's when it becomes fundable, I guess. Right. But, but yeah, how did, how did maybe Peter, we'll start with you. Like what led you to, to this, to this job, this line of work, what got you interested in fish? Well, I mean, what got me into fish is, um, I'll be honest, I was a little kid and I remember uh, a couple of things. I remember going to my mom's work and one of her colleagues had a probably a hundred gallon tank yeah. in the office and wow. his name was Fishkin. His last name was Fishkin, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. about it now. And I, my mom like all those last names. <laughs> Exactly right. <laughs> Mom would yeah. say I would be in front of that tank for hours, and she knew yeah. I didn't need to do anything. She didn't need to do anything. I just plant Sit myself there. there. <laughs> um, that at an early age, I really knew that I wanted to do something with fish, and I just happened to be really lucky. There was a pond, maybe like two hundred yards away from my house, so I could mm-hmm. literally oh, just wow. walk down the hill, and I would, you know, get a piece of bread or find a night crawler and just. Whatever I would catch, whether it was like a goldfish, you know, yeah. we'll go, whatever, yeah, or yeah. even chew, it didn't really matter, <laughs> right? It just, yeah, I just totally. wanted to go out and see what I could catch. And it was, it was just super fun. Um, and then tying into like everything that I've basically done since I was a kid has led my way here to where I knew that I wanted to be in work that was environmental, marine, or like water based. Always wanted to be water based. Um, and throughout college I did marine science. And then when I did, um, grad school, I did the same, uh, and it wasn't really until grad school to where I knew more about the community itself and how tight knit it was, because I think, I don't know about you guys, but as anglers, you're just, sometimes you're isolated, right? And you don't think about the community as a whole. Yeah. But when I got into grad school, I really saw how amazing the community is and how tight knit they are. Right. Um, you know, pros and cons obviously behind it, but mm-hmm. how amazing that community is and that sense of fellowship and fraternity is mm-hmm. almost unquestioned when it comes to other other lines of work or other communities. Yeah. I feel like it's very special. Um, and it's something that I feel very near and dear to just because, mm-hmm. man, I don't want to lose the ability for potentially someone to lose their job or someone to not be able to see the things that I've seen, right? Mm-hmm. To really mm-hmm. make it better. So that's how I kind of got into this. Sorry. No, that's cool. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, no, just, no. Just, just to go back a little bit for a sec, like what was it about? I always find it interesting. And I mean, like all the people we have on this show and obviously us, like we're all pretty obsessed with fish um and I, you know i think that same passion could be said for people that like birds or this right. what i'm always interested right. to know why people what about fish people are into like what do you think it was that you made you sit in front of that tank for hours Every, as a kid everything like the physiology of it i think the yeah. first thing right just seeing you know seeing these awkward looking animals be able to like mm-hmm. dart so fast and like be able to squeeze in between like little spaces so fast to go backwards like I still remember this one time we were fishing in Isla Mujeres and we were inside a bait ball. Just, we had an epic trip and we was like, we're done fishing. We just wanted mm-hmm. to see what it's like to be in a bait ball. And we get in there and my buddy's like, you know, we've never heard of people getting impaled before, but you know, it's possible. And my mm-hmm. buddies and I were like, we're, we're going to go anyway. We're, we're not stupid. We're mm-hmm. maybe be a little silly, yeah. but we'll be I careful. just remember <laughs> We go in this bait ball, guys, and it. I don't know if you've ever dove in a bait ball before, like snorkel no. or feed dive. No, but dude. you have. No. <laughs> I want to. You have these <laughs> sailfish, which are the fastest fish, right, in the yeah. water. And my my son calls them ocean cheetahs, which I love. 
That's and cool. <laughs> and you just have these fish literally darting and it's just amazing that they have the ability to go like right in right between your face and that's exactly what happened multiple times with my buddy and i it would literally go like where jeremy and i are right now it would mm. there would be bait right here and go right oh my right god there. jesus so scary it's it's incredible like i'm yeah. sure he probably might have messed his pants but it was um <laughs> it was amazing it, like yeah. like i said it, i think it's a whole host of things like the different colors that they can change you yeah. change into yeah. like learning mm -hmm. that they can change sexes too is yeah. kind of weird and funny and you know wild. yeah yeah wild yeah, it's right wild wild yeah, it's wild. yeah. yeah you, know, you know mammals you know mammals yeah <clears throat> Doing yeah. that very often, yeah. No. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I get embarrassed quite a bit, so I kind of turn pink at times, but that's about it. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. I mean, I totally feel you. Like fish are just like they're just kind of yeah, like really unique, you know, species. I mean, they're kind of like you know, it's kind of weird because I always thought of it as like they're like aliens on Earth, right? Like we yeah. still are learning so much about these fish. Like mm -hmm. Jeremy does so much great work at the lab down in Southern Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Him and his colleagues, not only there, but everywhere else, like they're learning so much more about not only billfish, but fish in general. And mm -hmm. the fact, like I always bring this up to, like, I just mentioned this to my son and daughter, is like we know more about the moon and the surface of the moon. That's so cool. Than we do about yeah. the ocean floor. I know. Yeah, that's yeah. so yeah. crazy. That's crazy. And they're like, that's no so way, crazy. we're honored. How do we know so much? I'm like, I know, it still boggles yeah. my mind that we know more yeah. about the moon. And we're <laughs> yeah. still spending like trillions of dollars. Let's just figure out you know, what we what's have going to on our in here? Planet. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Step one, you know, know, like here, and then we'll like look over the fence. Right. Um, yeah, I know. No, that's that's very true. Oh, insane. Um, well, Jeremy, why don't we just talk about you know like how you got into it? Now, I, I'm curious. You know, like I know you said you come from the Midwest. Yeah, so I guess it's kind of a similar story. I mean, my mom didn't have a friend at work with the fish tank, but I kind of grew up around fish tanks my whole life. You know, my grandparents had them and. Yeah, I think we had one when I was a kid, but uh, we had giant koi and like, oh wow, it was you know we had a fifty-five gallon tank and the fish were so big they could barely turn around. But yeah, they did. <laughs> that, was, that was really neat as a child, right? Totally. And then I always went fishing with my grandpa, and you know, would you know it was you know landlocked, so it was always bass fishing or you know bluegill if I was lucky. Yeah, and uh, it was just it was a different different uh, different area, and so a lot of fishing in you know Illinois and. At that point, you know, my little Snoopy rod and bobber and whatnot, but I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I was excited. That was like one of my favorite activities was going with uh, my grandpa. And then the dad mm -hmm. side of the family, they were up in Minnesota. So that was a whole different world That's of fishing. Awesome. At that oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. cool. I remember catching my first walleye and catching my first northern. Yep. Never got a muskie, but, uh, you know, saw some. Yeah. Probably my most memorable catch as a kid was an eel pout, and uh, I got made fun oh, cool. of for that. They never thought. <laughs> Those <laughs> are so cool. I know. I was told I over it. and over again, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, so there's just a passion there that kind of grew with fishing, and you know, a little bit older I got, I'd go off on my own, and you know, just enjoyed being out in nature. And oftentimes I'd go fish by myself when I got to be mm -hmm. a teenager, and yes. you know, just seeing the different wildlife and just you know curiosity and questions that came from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, ended up in Kansas uh, during my high school years. It's just where we kind of finally settled out at and uh got real interested in the marine world at that point and i think mm -hmm. i've ocean a handful of times prior to that mm -hmm. and decided that uh the college path was going to be something with the sciences and the more i thought about it i decided that marine science is kind of where i wanted to end up and there was one school in kansas it was about that big yeah and i think we had like 500 students on main campus total and wow. Wow. marine bio <laughs> A marine bio program in landlocked Kansas. Yeah, and, interesting. <laughs> and so I went all in. I did it. You know, I got into some other schools, got in down in Florida, but my folks decided that Kansas was a safer place to be, mm -hmm. and uh, so I did it. And one of our requirements is that we did a summer semester at a marine lab. Okay. And uh, two of our professors went up and taught up in Oregon, and I thought, well, you know, it's kind of cold and chilly, and I don't know if I want to go up there. And so I picked the Gulf Coast Research Lab in Mississippi. From yeah. a flyer on a poster board down in the main lobby of our built our science building. <laughs> that's an oh, that's that a, one. That's awesome. Yep. And it was just that is awesome. Like no good reason to go down there except I saw it. Like, 
Yeah, I bet it's warm in Mississippi in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. It's probably hot as hell, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And so I, I went down to Mississippi, spent the whole summer down there, learned about the barrier islands we have, took a shark biology course, and just fell absolutely in love with uh, with the Gulf of Mexico. And yeah. uh, ended up staying on and interning for the rest of that summer in the shark lab, did a bunch of great projects, um, <laughs> went home, graduated about six months later. And went back down to Southern Miss and started a graduate program. And, That's cool. Uh, process of that, it's coastal science program is what we have on in our area on the coast. We're kind of a satellite campus. Yeah. And started doing some shark research for my master's. That evolved into working on a variety of different fisheries topics. Um, and as like Peter was saying, you know, working with the community is a very huge part of what we do. And just seeing that, and now the more I've been in my career and and working with people, just the sport fishing community in our area is very tied with our lab. Yeah. Especially some of our senior research scientists that we have. Uh, you can't hardly go anywhere with our, our colleague, Jim Franks, without 15 people stopping you. Because Jim is... He's the man. He's the man. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. the godfather. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Everybody knows him since they were kids or their kids were kids or, you know, right. multiple generations. And so having that interaction, just working with the community... Yeah, really just I mean, it's it's a nice way to piece everything together and really makes it feel like this is a, you know, it is an important process that we're doing, but it's more important because we see how the community is also involved in it, how we can help, how we can help sustain their way of life and the way of life of generations, because coastal Mississippi is a huge fisheries based industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the work we do helps support that and helps make sure that those fisheries can remain sustainable. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, makes, that's awesome. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the Gulf of Mexico is especially like uh, Mitch and I were lucky enough to do uh, the Gulf in Texas uh, a couple times for red redfish, and that was just like such a cool place, special place. Like... And um, yeah, we've always wanted to do Louisiana and stuff like that for redfish as well. So that's a, that must uh, that must have been a really cool experience. Yeah, you'll probably so... not want to come home if you go to Venice and fish. yeah, <laughs> that's really? just letting you know. Yeah. You're yeah. probably gonna want to stay there forever. If you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Man. I do have to pitch that we have good redfish fisheries too. So you know, I'm sure. Yeah, my my boss. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sure. You, I, yeah, if, I, I, you know, I'm sure oh, you yeah. do, but no need to blow. Yeah. No, no need to blow spots. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, that. blow spots yeah. up. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So obviously, you know, you, you guys work. Uh, like you know, Jeremy, you were just saying, your assistant director at Southern Miss. Um, how do your roles fit into the Billfish Foundation? Like, what do you guys do at the Billfish Foundation? So, so just just to be clear, so I work for the Billfish Foundation, and and Jeremy, he is a partner. He's one of our partners. He's a got it. Okay, at the got university. It. Yeah. Got it. So, yep. so got just it. to be clear, like whenever. Um, whenever I have a question or whenever I want to collaborate with a, a research institution, they're yeah. one of the first ones. Really, because of the establishment of, of The Godfather with, with Jim Franks, we right. have such a good relationship with the lab and with Jeremy because of the work that we've done with them. Uh, we have a long history, probably, I don't know, two at least two decades. Oh, at least, yeah. Right. Um, we've oh, done a wow. lot of work together. And when Costa had called us about, hey, we love – for TB up to be involved and to get some of the satellite tags in and do some scientific research, we're like, we have the perfect people for you. We're gonna, you're gonna work with us, awesome. But if we're working together, we want to make sure that really good science comes out of it. And we know because of the history that we have with them, we definitely gonna work with um, with Gulf Coast Research Lab. Uh, so and Jeremy and, and, and Dr. Frank. So right, that makes sense. Um, okay, so when Costa called you guys to, you know, do this project and specifically do the, the striped marlin tagging, like, um, what was your initial reaction to this? You know, like, um, can I say I was jumping up and down like a giddy schoolgirl? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you definitely can. <laughs> I, I mean, what had you excited? I, you know, 100%. I think for, for me, I was pinching myself, honestly. They had been talking about it, like, whispers in the background, like, Peter, we've got this thing going on, you know. We really think it's going to happen. <laughs> and then, you know, I think we find out maybe two months before the actual trip, maybe in early, about a month, maybe in a month. They wow. say, it's a go. And we're like, oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't think it was ever going to happen. <clears throat> um, and for me, like I said, I pinched myself like this is a once in a lifetime 
thing, I thought, like to myself, of yeah, wow, we're going to be going to Mag Bay, which I've never been to Mag Bay before, but I've heard for over a decade how amazing that fishery is. But mm-hmm. then two, get to potentially satellite tag some fish. We didn't know we were going to have 15 tags at the time, but you know we're going to satellite tag some fish. And then three, we're going to be going off pangas. And then four, it's going to be all fly fishing. Too. Yeah. <laughs> it was like when I when I was talking with Joe about it initially, my yeah. mind was like, I don't know how many more times my mind can explode, but it, <laughs> you know, it did when they said, yeah. "Oh, we're doing this." You know, you you're coming. It's going to be you know three days of fishing. I was like, Yeah, what what it's what? Everything's so yeah. Yeah. Was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we're getting thirty anglers together, and we're all yeah, doing, exactly. you know, like it's like yeah, okay, yeah they okay. didn't even tell us who was coming. They're like, oh yeah, some people are coming. It's gonna be kind of a big deal, but we still it's like hush, some of the hush. coolest anglers around the world. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and and really, like I think for me, and I told Joe and Hannah and everyone else involved in it, it was a transcendent trip for me personally. Wow, right. It what was, made it that? Like what? What about that? It was a trip to where, like, I've been on satellite tagging trips before, and those are all great. Listen, they're yeah. awesome, and all the anglers are down, really down to do all the stuff. But there were so many things kind of – I feel like that was kind of stacked against us in a way. Like, in one, a way, yeah. Right? Like, it was a long journey from all of us to get there, first of all. It's right. not mm-hmm. an easy journey, but – um but the thing was, like, we had to go out to the fishery grounds and pangas, which no one really knew how it was going to be. Like, the outfit was great. Los, Los Locos, they were fantastic. Um, but you go out there, and I've been on satellite tagging trips, and so is Jeremy, to where you know, you're fishing for three days, and you'd be lucky to tag. Right. Three. Right. Three you're, like, really trying. Three like conventional tackle. And... Yeah, everything. Yeah. Right? You're, yeah. you're trying to get them, and... And for me, in the back of my mind, and I didn't want to tell him this, like, oh, you know, we've got all these tags. We're going to be able to get them all out. Don't worry. I'm like, but we're using conventional tackle, and we can only yeah. get three. Yep. And you're yeah. saying that you're – Fly uh, fish. Yeah, you're fly fishing for these suckers. <laughs> you understand what you're, what you're yeah. doing here? And yeah. Like, oh, don't worry. We've got the best of the best. I'm like, I know, but <clears throat> these are marlin <clears throat> from Pangas. Right, like yeah. <laughs> I've heard of people fly fishing for marlin. I'm sure you have as well, but in big sport fishing boats, you know, yeah, like deep it, sea, kind your of. bait yeah. switching, <clears throat> yeah, right. They're yeah. they're floating condos, floating mansions, right? Like yeah. this is in pangas. You're you're doing sight fishing, you, and you know, for me, was, yeah. I was like, man, like to be yeah. able to pull off what they were able to pull off, mm-hmm. to be able to get that community inv- involvement, and I mm-hmm. think for me as well was. To have the community and the anglers all understand the goal, but all being super inquisitive and asking the real, really, really good questions about why this is being done and why it's so important, right. my mind was blown. Like mm-hmm. when you talk to like Brandon Sear or Nick Labadi or Benny Blanco, and they're like, they're literally asking you like really hard hitting questions about the research and about yeah. the- what this is going to do, I'm like, wow, this is like, oh, they actually like care. care it's not yeah. just like, a, right. well, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was yeah. amazing. And then you just, the conversations you would have with them were, were really good. You know, we were just BSing by the fire, having, you know, whatever we were drinking that night, but just yeah. having really sometimes, you know, silly, silly conversation, but at the same time, poignant questions about, yeah man, okay, has this ever been done before? You know, what are we looking to do? How can we better ourselves? And then, Mm -hmm. you know, having the community members come in too and say, wow, this means so much that you're doing it here Mm -hmm. and you're going to help. I mean, we're not putting Mag Bay on the map at all, but Mm -hmm. man, you're helping us, not not only helping us uh, as the fishery and the fish, but helping the community to -hmm. provide this baseline data that's never been done before. Right. Yeah, like, totally. We're yeah. just like, wow, like all these different things. That's why for me it was so transcendent to where mm-hmm. it was all of the heartache to get out there because it wasn't an easy putt to get to, right? Mm-hmm. No. I would do it 10 times over, a yeah. hundred, hundred times over. Oh, that's I would, awesome. I would take – like I have a trip to Thailand soon, which is a 30-hour plane ride. I would do that 10 times to do what I did. Yeah. So, Man, that's cool. I mean, I, like on paper, the idea is like from an investment standpoint, terrifying, you know, exactly. Because oh it's like, 
oh, okay, we're going to do this complicated thing in like the most artistic way in a way, you know? Yeah. But I think what that blend of science and art fly fishing from pangas with really passionate people oh my God. for scientific purpose, but also to help community, like all of the things made it such a human trip. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like science and it's not just like fun. It's like yeah. this perfect mix of everything. Mm -hmm. I think, I think what's interesting too is like you know you watch if you you know and I think people should because they didn't whoever shot that did an amazing job but you know the eight minute doc it doesn't look easy but in in, in a weird way it doesn't look hard like oh we had thirty of the best anglers and uh, oh we're tagging you know fish left right and center and so to just, if you were just to watch if you just if you <laughs> yeah. were to just yeah. watch that video you'd be like you'd be like oh yeah well like what, oh marlin are easy what was to so catch hard on. about yeah, that you know <laughs> and like and like you know the layers is, uh, as to how difficult it was and, and how well it went and not not only just the fishing but like to even get 15 tags you know in our, the last show we realized how much even just one tag costs yeah. which is mm -hmm. wild mm -hmm. and then like, you, against you know, you guys, you know yeah, like, there's oh, a yeah. lot of you know funding yeah logistics to 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 really you know go up against um well, there's a lot to unpack about what you just said, but maybe if we, Mitch, may I? Please do. We just go back, back just one step before we get hardcore into the trip. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just a little bit about the Billfish Foundation. Yep. Like, now we know how you're connected with it. You know, we, you know, maybe we just need to learn uh, just a little bit because, you know, our listeners might not know. Yeah, of course. Mitch touched on what the Billfish Foundation is, but maybe you can illuminate us on, like, you know, when it was founded, where is it based out of, and, like, how many people are in the, like, what kind of size of this and sweep, like, scope this Project organization scope. I has. Gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. yeah. No, so so um I think Mitch you talked about when we were founded in nineteen eighty six. Um we Which were was the year I was born, by the way. Well wow, happy birthday. Young. Thanks man. <laughs> you are you are young, buddy. <laughs> I'm not yet he was much wasn't even alive when you started the tagging program. <laughs> oh my God. How I don't know. <laughs> I'm fourteen. You guys and I got a beard early, but you know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we were found in 19, 1986 by basically a bunch of anglers and scientists that were going out and wanted to learn more about billfish. And at that time, nothing was really out there in terms of collecting that sort of data and understanding right. how it was being managed. So uh, a number of individuals, um, 50 individuals and uh, fishing clubs, they all got together and scientists. And what I love about the Billfish Foundation is it's always been about community and science and implementation of advocacy together, mm -hmm. all together. It wasn't just, you know, one one segment of one segment of uh, uh, or one segment of people that were involved in the founding of TBF. It was scientists as well as anglers, as well as fishing clubs. You know, it was all sectors that were involved in it. And what TBF does is we look to uh, not only conserve billfish populations worldwide, but also to make sure that our fishing access is there all the time to be able to have a sustainable resource for future generations, as well as making sure that those communities that are dependent on that healthy fishery are not only recognized, but promoted as well. So, for example, one of the reasons why we're here at this conference um, is basically, actually, your poster is about the collaboration between a nonprofit like the Billfish Foundation and a research institution, how effective right. that is to get things done. And, and actually, there was a great speech tonight by the Prime Minister of the Bahamas. It was actually an amazing speech of how cognizant at least this administration is in regards to what the marine resources mean to the Bahamas. And right. it stuck out to me to where he said, you know, there's, I'm going to paraphrase him because I can't remember yeah. exactly, but he was basically saying, you know, how tied the Bahamian government and culture are to the marine resources. And basically we need to protect it, promote it and make sure nothing happens to it negatively. Right. Wow, that's and, cool. And for us, that's, a, you know, an analogy is the same thing with TBF. We are doing everything in our power to make sure that we are the voice for the offshore angler or those that love um, to go offshore as well as those people that are part of that community. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we represent them not only on the advocacy side and the science side, 
but you know, just to make sure that that voice is always there, that we can make sure that we have not only um, the the voice there, but we have the science to back up that voice, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 and a voice for the fish too, right? Exactly. Like, I mean, like, yes, exactly. Because they can't. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, they're just yeah. Right. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. Silly question. I kick this to you, Jeremy. Uh, what is a billfish? Like, which what fish <laughs> incorporate the billfish? Honestly, good question. Good question. Because like we're up in Canada, you know. We've, I've been. I to can tell you what a walleye is, times. but uh, I don't know. You know. I don't know much about billfish. And I've been bone fishing. But... <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the yeah, bill, what? Yeah, the billfishes are. Um, well, you have your what are considered your true billfishes, which are the marlins. So you have blue marlin, black marlin, stripes, white marlin, um, and then you also have your spearfish, um, your sailfish, and then you have your. Um, oh, is there what two or three of the? Um, you said white marlin. I said white marlin. Okay, and then. So it's spearfish. So the spear. Who am I forgetting? You said black, blue, white, black, stripe, blue, white, stripe, spearfish, short bill, short bill, long bill, short bill, long bill. Uh huh. Whoa, Mitch. Then, um, Mitch is on I Google, Google, everybody. I Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah brown scale. Yeah, brown scale spearfish is a relatively new species that they discovered. Uh, oh, what? Probably about less than ten years ago at this point. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, cool. and then you have the non. Non the non traditional billfish would be swordfish. Yeah. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. You guys have that up in Canada? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Again, not you know, I mean, like we said, they're kinda like a walleye, but just a lot bigger. Um <laughs> nose looks a little funny, but you know, a little different. Well, yeah, a little 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 different. Yeah. Yeah. And so stripe what's the biggest billfish again? It's the um because stripe marlin aren't the biggest of the billfish, no, right? No, they're relatively black, small. right? Yeah. Compared to, compared to other billfish, they're relatively small, but you know the biggest, yeah. you know, is is considered the blue, which can be blue. You know, the blue. That makes sense. Yeah, can be, yeah. you know, if you give it a chance, potentially over two thousand pounds. Yeah. So <laughs> one, oh, no. Jesus. So, any of these, any of these in, endangered or of like being very vulnerably endangered? Yeah. So that's a great question. So there, are, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna kind of skirt the question a little bit in terms of an answer. They are considered, I believe, threatened or vulnerable. No, vulnerable, I believe. I believe vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah. but the the thing of it is, like I was uh, I think I said earlier in the begin in, in the uh, of this podcast is not a lot is known about billfish. They are not um, they're not like a tuna or a dolphin fish or even like a trout where it's easy to collect information on them. These are rare vent species, and the more information we get on them, the better. But the statistics and the assessments that we see, we've seen it steadily, you know, either slightly increase or stay level. Um, that doesn't mean that there's they're plentiful. You know, they're, <laughs> they're never gonna be like a mahi-mahi or a dorado. Right. Um, but um, <clears throat> that's a great question. Um, we do believe that they are, they're they're vulnerable, but they're not, they are not endangered. They're not threatened, um, and it's it's something that we talk about all the time within advocacy or within science. Is we need more data, right? We mm -hmm. need to understand more about this fish, and to kind of go on a sidebar a little bit, if 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 I may, please, is, yeah, you may. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, <laughs> it, you know, we have we have. We have agreements with some of these tournaments that collect and harvest or land some of these uh, these magnificent fish. And a lot of people ask us, how can the Billfish Foundation, you know, be a part of some of these tournaments that do that? And I can say mm -hmm. this very confidently is because we work with institutions like um, like Jeremy's mm -hmm. because without the collection of those animals, we wouldn't be able to know more about them. That's how rare right. they are. Right. right. Like, wow. For example, they just, you, you want to tell them about what just happened? So there was a, there was just a, an 1140, what, 44 pound blue marlin landed in Alabama. Um, what? By, by chance. <laughs> yep. Uh, charter boat, I believe that was out and hooked into oh it. Oh my God. And wow. uh, it's, 
I believe, the Alabama record for sure. It's a and Gulf I of Mexico think it's record. The Gulf of Mexico record. Wow. Um, I don't know how they do all that certification. That's outside of my wheelhouse, but it's the largest one I've heard about by far. Yeah. And so, wow, 1,100 pounds. Jesus. <laughs> samples from a fish like that are very few and far between at best. I think the biggest yeah, uh, marlin so. prior to that was 1,054 pounds that were caught over a decade ago. Yeah. And so, right. I know right. that was sampled at the tournament that it was caught at. As Alabama fish, I know samples were collected. Now, what comes from that, I don't know for sure. Um, mm -hmm. and we weren't directly involved in that, um, in the weighing in of that fish, you know, since we kind of stay in our in Mississippi, you know, area for the most part. But we're, we work with other research groups that were able to collect some samples from that. So ultimately, um, hopefully we'll be able to figure out what the age of that fish was. And mm -hmm. that's important for looking at <laughs> stock structure and, um, you know, age structure for the stock and, you know, how... What is their theoretical longevity? Can we get a good estimate in the Gulf of Mexico, which, you know, we don't get a lot of fish landed, so we don't have a real real solid baseline uh, for the data here or realistically yeah. anywhere yeah. because just not very many fish are landed. And, and that's that's kind of what I was getting at, and I think I mentioned that within the documentary as well. We know so little about these fish. Yeah. Any chance that we have an opportunity – to get and sample this data, a, a sample, um, have hard parts to sample, especially mm -hmm. off a of fish um, that is that large. Is it sad that it's not in the water swimming anymore? Yes, 100%. But yeah. our goal is to make sure there are more fish like that in the future. And yeah. then more importantly is to learn from the fish that gave yeah. its life as well. Um, For sure. Yeah. You know, I think, I think a lot like – yeah, I mean, in a way, it's like that fish doesn't die in vain, mm -hmm. you know, and I yeah. know like uh, that could be thrown around for all kinds of like probably much more trivial things. But of but this it's like actually because it's like you say they're that elusive and mysterious. It's funny, like I, I feel like brown trout are elusive, you know, for me. It's like <laughs> probably it's obviously they're everywhere. Um, what is like what is it about striped marlin or just billfish in general that makes them mysterious and elusive? Like, why do we lack this information and, and how do we not know? And I know it's probably the stupidest question you guys were like, cause the ocean's big, you know, like, <laughs> but like, how do we not know where they're going? And I mean, I, it's kind of interesting. It's, 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 it's interesting. Cause like, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. It's pretty big. Yeah. It's, pre it's pretty big. It's pretty big. It's interesting because like, you know, to your point, Mitch, like when you think about it, billfish or sailfish or, or Marlin in general, or like colloquially, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen it, you've seen them on like the walls of, restaurants and right. like, you see them in nature shows and, and you know <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly like <laughs> uh and i know that sounds silly but like they're kind of people know what they are to an extent yeah. like the yeah. average person probably knows what a billfish is and we, yeah. you know exactly. like you've seen it on a wall or and in they a know the show difference between somewhere. a marlin and a swordfish yes and a, mm -hmm. you know like, so it, then to hear that very little is known about them is almost like i don't know mm -hmm. surprising in a way but also not surprising because, I mean, we've been doing this show for so long, so it doesn't really surprise us. But, like, to hear that there's that little research on the it's, – it's cool in a way. Yeah. and so, it, Oh, go ahead. No, no, please. So if you think about it, you know, realistically, it's a trophy fishery, right? So the ones you see in the different establishments, you know, that's right. that large fish that somebody caught or a model of somebody's large fish or, you know, what mm -hmm. have you. Yeah. And so – Getting data off those trophy fish is great, but it's it's a very small part of what we need to better actually understand the life history of that fish overall. You know, we need the trophy fish, and then we need little guys and you know little fish yeah. or juveniles. We need life stages so we yeah. can appropriately understand like what their life history is. When do they become sexually mature? When do they mm -hmm. start? You know, contributing back to the population reproductively. At what age is that? Not only what size, but what age? Mm -hmm. So then yes. with that information, we can start setting size limits. And that might help to say, okay, we're not going to harvest undersized fish because yeah. they aren't sexually mature and they haven't been able to contribute back to the population or the stock. Very it's the cool. same with every other fishery. But a lot of our other fisheries, you know, you know, whether it's freshwater or coastal saltwater, it's easy to get samples, right? There's a lot of those fish that's close to shore. And so with the billfish, that's not the case, right? I mean, you get some sailfish that are close to shore and, <clears throat> Occasionally, we see some other stuff that make it relatively as close, but a lot of our, at least in the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of those fish are coming from several hundred miles out. And so wow. it's not close. It's not easy to get there. So it's a challenge. And if we're looking for younger individuals, it's a whole different that's, game that's, thing. So now we're on a research vessel 
maybe halfway across the Gulf of Mexico pulling nets and it's a big ocean. Just hoping and right? seeing so you what might happens. get one, yeah. you might get none, and it could be two or three weeks out there. And you partner that with other projects to make it still viable, but you never know what you're really going to get because it's randomized sampling and it's not for those non-trophy fish. It's not something that's targeted. I think what's really yeah. interesting to you guys, I don't know what you guys can show within the podcast, but these guys at the lab and other research students, but I'm going to, I'm going to say him because obviously he's here and I don't want to make him look bad either. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what's really cool is, you know, we talked about how blue Marlin can be over two, you know, one ton, 2000 pounds. Right. Yeah. But what's really, really neat is blows, blows my mind all the time is they start as like smaller than this, like, that's crazy. Like a million, yes, that's true. That's right. Really, like, yeah. like yeah. It, it is, it blows my mind. And I remember showing my son this and my daughter this and they're like, no, that can't grow that big. And then yeah. what's even cooler is that they at the lab, like he said, they're pulling literally like, it looks like pool nets, which gigantic pool nets, right? Yeah. They're pulling yeah. it and they're trying to pick out all the different species they see in there. And you see all these things that look like aliens. Yeah. Right. They, they, they do not look like whatever they grow into, and marlin are one of them. And I don't know, like, I don't know if you could show them at a later point, but it is awesome. Mm. It is oh, yeah. awesome yeah. to see what these what these guys look like as like two weeks old. Yeah. Um, you know, they start out. Yeah, I've never. Those, and those develop after you know a short period of time, and right. swordfish are only yep. billfish that have a I bill feel. like from straight out of the the shoot, but otherwise. Yeah. Like they don't That's look true, anything man. like they're like they would once they get past that larval stage. They look absolutely yeah. like aliens. That's, <laughs> it's awesome. It's That's so, so cool. I've never thought about it. Yeah, like they must start as like the smallest before. little teeny yeah, finger. It's like a baby pigeon, you know? Like yeah. you see pigeons all the time. You never see a baby one. It's kind of the same thing. It's like yeah. the heck does a marlin yeah. baby marlin? I think David Attenborough like, might have showed it once or twice. <laughs> one of those yeah? yeah blue i'll have to share a picture on uh on our yeah Instagram, maybe, maybe you know guys. after we can get some photos yeah. and then while yeah. we're promoting the show because you know we yeah. should promote the show over a two-week span we'll we'll, yeah. we'll share some images on how Instagram. old is a thousand and a thousand pound marlin so i don't actually know so Mitchell, they Mitchell did the, so the last i've heard <laughs> I'm just about they and that's a great question mitch i think it was you mitch right that said that <laughs> yes um, it was me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never seen one that big, so I don't know. So I yeah. think the last one, and yeah. you could, we'd have to take a look at this. I think the last one that Noah did was a Pacific Blue that they had aged. Um, and that was over 1,000 pounds. And I think yeah. that was about 27 to 30 years old. Wow. Um, okay. And just just fun fact, any billfish or any, sorry, any marlin over 350, they're all female too. Oh. So, all of these, um, all of these big girls, all yeah. these big fish are all girls, mm, um, yeah. and the reason behind it is, as you look in nature, a lot of it, a lot of the bigger, bigger individuals within a species are females because mm. of reproduction, fecundity, and yeah. like that too. So, yeah. a little fun. That's cool for you guys. Thirty, thirty years. Okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it is wild protection. to go from small to something like that in thirty years. Yeah. It's like Jesus. I mean, it's obviously all dependent on you know. Lots Ooh. of variables, right? Like how, yeah. how much they're able to eat. What's you know, what's the environment like? But but still, right. it was really, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's why, like I said, it's super important for us to get, or for our community, research community, to be able to get that information, um, and to get those hard parts to really understand just the basic life history of mm. these fish. Um, mm -hmm. um, you call so, them a rare event species. What's a rare event? Or what's what are you define as a like rare a, event, a rare yeah. event? Species. Um, like well, you, they only show up. Yeah, I mean, according for... to Mitch, it's like finding brown trout, right? So it's it's impossible for me. <laughs> for so... me, I'm not a good angler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, so... I see. It's rare in the sense of the event of finding them is rare. Correct. Correct. So okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you're rolling so... up on like pods of jacks like a, or something yeah yeah i mean th think about it this way like if we were to go out in the gulf of mexico like when we, when we went out we went out in 2019 we went out with i think 20 boats to go out fishing right and we went out far like 120 miles offshore yeah, at least yep. yeah at least 120 miles offshore Jeez. we had 20 boats actively looking for billfit actively looking for blue marlin and we only got you know a handful i think maybe we got six or seven yeah. um I think the year before we had like 
12 or 13. Yeah, it was a bit more. It was a little bit more. Um, and we still consider that a, a success. But that's a lot of effort to try to get, you know, a handful of fish. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's why they're rare event. They're not easy to find. Um, we're still learning a lot about it. Like when we're doing the satellite tagging, we can see not only vertical but horizontal information. We can see heat. We can see uh, uh, ocean, uh, sea surface temperature. Um, there's right. lots of different things that it can help us provide. Like um, around the fish as well. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, the tides record temperature, cool. and so like we can see whatever water temperature, or water profile the fish is swimming in. So yeah, that's yeah. so cool. And then the migration may change a little bit. I'm assuming, based based on how everything's warming up, may change. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Sorry, say that one more time. No, I was just saying that could change their their migration too. I mean, since everything's sort of warming up, I mean, one hundred percent. We, we that had data. this really, we had this really cool track, and maybe I can try to share it with you if I'm allowed to. Is um, a couple of years, actually on that 2019, it was showing how fish were going through the Gulf of Mexico, going down to the Yucatan, basically following the edges of the eddy, mm -hmm. like the cold, okay. warm water, yep. just following it, right? It wasn't going yeah. inside that much. It was literally just going around wherever the eddies were. And it was yeah. really, really cool to see, basically have some validation that a lot of anglers have been talking about, okay? They don't like this kind of temperature water and then specifically looking right. at where right. there's a lot of mixing going on right yeah. to where there was more of a chance to find you know the prey that they were looking for yeah hmm. that's cool um okay so why stripe marlin why specifically stripe marlin yeah, let's and get into mag bay. bay let's get yeah. into that now that we've got we keep delving down into <laughs> deeper into the deeper marlin into the marlin fly pro and now we've arrived at the marlin fly project <laughs> yeah. what was that yeah. again uh, <laughs> uh, do you do you want to go for it? So I, I think for for Costa's purpose is they were mm -hmm. looking at, um, and I can't speak for them obviously, but I think what they were looking at was what is going to be what fishery, you know, means a lot to that community specifically, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And they were actively targeting striped marlin, um, and they have been, and they were trying to do something really unique and novel which was you know that that outfit los locos they're doing specifically on fly i know they do some conventional but really their specialty is fly and then they had talked to us about hey you know has any research been done on this stuff before and i honestly i kind of laughed at them because i'm like satellite tagging you know yeah. on the fly <laughs> you guys are crazy right like yeah there there were there were discussions of, is this an actual good idea? Because it's one thing to do it for publicity, but is it going to hurt the fish? Is it going to, what is it going to do? Yes. Right. And when we had talked about it, we had, you know, they were talking about all these different methods that they were looking to do and how they're going to do it. I was like, okay, I could see this working. I just, I don't know how successful we're going to be, even with these amazing pros that they were going to bring. Yeah. Um, and, we I know that they wanted to highlight that community, that fishery, that very specific fishery. And mm -hmm. that's why. And they knew okay. obviously striped marlin is very near and dear to that community, especially that San Car I think San Carlos that was the community that, yeah. that it was out of. Yep. So Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And so yeah, just, I mean and they're just such a beautiful fish too, you know, yeah, like in the film. It's like yeah. they're just like the blues of these fish. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. It's <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. One of the most beautiful species yeah. out there, for sure. So I think the the other interesting side of that is, you know, not knowing what we were getting into when we got down there, right? So we right. Like Marlin were picked <laughs> because that's what the fishery is there, mm -hmm. and it's obviously <clears throat> booming, which was just absolutely incredible. Those things are everywhere, um, which yeah. is awesome, awesome to see, seeing them light up and slash through bait balls. But yeah, so you know, cool. With this this fishery that's growing, you know, how does it impact the the population? How does it impact the fish? And mm -hmm. you know that that's super variable, right? You know, fly rod might be a slower time to land it than conventional tackle. It might not, depending on who you are. And you know, how does how what is the survivability? <clears throat> and so that was one of the big questions and one of the conversations. And we you know we didn't know going into it. And yeah. And we know we know more now, but we're still waiting for more data to come in as well. So. Right, for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, why? I mean, yeah. Why not Stripe Marlin? You know, like it's like let's start somewhere and why not start with them? And it was cool to hear from from Joe and Hannah about like just the thing that blew my mind was the fight. Like in terms of a Stripe Marlin, was getting it the fish in pretty quickly on a fly rod. You know, I was which, shocked, honestly. I mean, yeah. obviously, I, I mean, I shouldn't be knowing the individuals that they brought. You know, from Hillary to Paula to yeah. and all these guys, they were they were amazing, and they you know they were so careful with everything. Yeah. Um, and it was so interesting. Like I said, you know, you know, angler to angler, scientist to scientist, whatever, that's, that's all great. But you can tell when someone is being not only an active listener, but like being incredibly careful about every single detail, they wanted to make it 100%. We, they want to make a hundred percent sure that we were comfortable with the way they were doing it, which for, for some of those guys, Mm -hmm. They don't need to listen to me at all. They, you know, they, you know, and you know, we were talking about fly fishing in Montana where Paula, I think Paula, she wouldn't listen to me at all. Yeah. But when it came to this stuff, they knew how important it was Mm -hmm. and they wanted every single checklist off. Yeah. And they made sure that they were, you know, you know, stripping it right. They were reeling in correctly. And I was shocked how fast it was coming in. Like some of them were less than like two, three minutes. It was. Yeah. You know, it's so crazy. It was like a huge (laughs) fish. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it was insane. Yeah. It was absolutely insane. Yeah. And then you, I don't know if they told you, but there's this awesome scene. I remember like, I think that was our first day and Benny is reeling in a fish with half a rod. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got some pretty awesome pictures. Uh, the photographer, Nick, yeah. Uh, yeah. he's, he's been on our show before. Cool yeah. guy. Photographer. Photographer. Great, photographer. He's a great, great guy. photographer. He's got some of those awesome shots of Benny's rod and luckily you know again luckily enough Mitch and I have fished with Benny and we know how passionate yeah he is about yeah pretty much everything and uh I'm sure that must have been a quite a scene oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> it was it was so weird to me like um when I was I was telling my buddies when I came home I was like listen the fishery is amazing but half the time I was just watching them cast yeah yes. I wasn't looking at the yeah. fish I was just <laughs> yeah. watching beauty of them casting yeah. like watching you know benny or you know paul or hillary or like brandon all these amazing pros literally like back cast they're just doing like oh you know nothing like 50 yards that way 100 yards that way like you know yeah. rocking on the panga you know like perfectly placing where i said to you know drop the line they're like it was it, it's it, cool it was making me smile from ear to ear yeah. and I, I had to catch myself sometimes because i wasn't watching the fish because i was like oh, god they're, they're casting again i need to watch them <laughs> <laughs> peter take the fish jesus yeah. <laughs> i mean <laughs> it's cool like how fishing and like fly fishing too obviously is like evolved over time from you know you think about like fishing and like outdoor sports and, and fly fishing back in the day of being like tough like dominate nature you know like kill the fish eat it like right. you know to now where it's more like some anglers are even and we've talked about it before like thinking about like gosh i hang the rod up because like i love the fish mm-hmm. so much i almost don't even want to hook it you know it's like yeah. it's cool the progression of it fish. was it was like i said it was such a transcendent trip for me and I, i'm sorry i'm repeating myself like a broken record no, but no. it that no, was please. the time after that trip i'm like i need to learn how to fly fish i need <laughs> to do this after watching like the majesty of their cast and then just yeah understand the passion that they had for them. Like yeah. I need to understand this. And because of that trip, I took my first fly fishing trip to North Carolina and Asheville. And that was a completely oh, nice. flip my script in terms of what fishing was like. Mm. Yeah. Like just because like I didn't know what I was doing. I was listening to the guy who was telling me what to do. Like I know what to do kind of, but not really. But like yeah. you're not on a boat with like four or five or ten other people, like, you know, talking to them yeah. you're literally in nature by yourself with your yeah. guide kind of it yeah. was a surreal experience it really was it was it was a yeah. really surreal experience. that's cool yeah uh, no, that's great jeremy do you fly fish so i i dabbled when i was younger in colorado yeah. and caught a few trout yeah. and i hadn't really touched it all but then when we were down on this trip you know yeah. tags were out everybody was happy yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, I want a shot. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so they gave me a spinning rod. So I, you know, had my shot with that, yeah. got one of the boat, and like, they're everywhere. Uh, there's a fly rod right here. Do you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, let's 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 try. And so yeah. uh, Noah Thompson was the guy that was on our boat, and he walked He's me through great. it. I mean, it's been 
15 plus years since I picked up a fly rod. Walked yeah. me through it, made a bunch of cast, got one to the boat. Nice. Wow. No that's way. So that's cool. awesome. That's, that's so cool. <laughs> Did the muscle memory come lost. back or was it a, a new learning experience? Uh, I think it was pure luck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was pure, pure luck. You just blacked yeah. out. And... Yep. I just woke up and there was a fish there suddenly. And like, <laughs> well, <laughs> it, they caught it. Yeah, I was about to say they just they, they did a yeah. hand. Yeah. Oh, you did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. Well, if you need some mo- motivation, uh, just across the street from you guys on Andros Island, you can go visit our guide Prince, and he'll motivate you to, <laughs> to become a great angler yeah. if you want to go fish yeah. for bonefish. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's some. See, it was funny. They just mentioned um, an award winner last night. Uh, sorry, tonight, Prescott Smith, who I guess yeah. fishes out of Andros as well. Yeah, um, I guess he's a fly fisherman as well. So um, I met him like a couple years ago, and he's a very passionate, I'll say the least, uh, angler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Man, that's cool. yeah. Andros is cool. Really it's awesome. like, yeah. yeah, we can talk about bone fishing another time. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, but it's a yes. it's a very <laughs> the Bahamas are a special place. Yeah. Um. Oh my god, I lost my train of thought. Oh. No, lost my train. No, it's gone. Oh, I well, guess I, I guess kinda... I, initially, sorry, initially, yeah. like I know Hannah and Joe had mentioned <laughs> that there was like there's um, you know certain tags um, at different time. Uh, is interval the right word? Um, you know, like three month, six month, eight month, twelve. Have you started seeing some of that data, or like starting to come back, or are you trying to uh, you know have you analyzed any of it, or yeah, you're so gonna wait until they're had... all back? Um, some of the opportunistic tags that we brought down um, that weren't part of the initial plan, but they were made available, which was phenomenal to bring these with. They were they were um, they're getting a little bit older, and they have a certain shelf life, battery life, and so they were reprogrammed to last for four months. And so we put out I think it's five or six, I think it was six yeah. four month tags, and so they popped off. As expected, about four months later, one of them came off a little bit uh, prematurely, but that's pretty common with satellite tags. You almost never get the full duration of what the time is for deployment. All right. And, um, you know, so <clears throat> I guess let me back up a little bit. You tag your fish, it's back in the water, and that tag starts calculating time and starts recording data. At the prescribed time, it actually has an attachment at the, at the tip that releases and the tag floats to the surface and then yeah. starts transmitting data to so the cool. satellites. And so yeah. when the tag's actually on the fish, we have no knowledge of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And so it is radio silence for however long that deployment is. So for so cool. three months or so, we didn't hear a word. Scary. And, and you just assume that, yeah. hey, <laughs> yeah, that that doesn't tag, we just threw in the water. I hope these things are working. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. might be, they yeah. might not be. Right. And so we're getting we got some data back on those half a dozen fish with the short deployments. Uh, Post processing is a lot of work. And uh, yeah. So oh yeah. yeah. Think, once you get the data back, it goes back to the company, and then it goes off to uh, then for further post processing to get good geolocation information on them. Because uh, literal months of just yeah twenty four seven data. Yep. Right? And you know, and yeah. that data is recorded. You know, every 15 seconds, every 30 seconds, depending on how you program the tags. Holy fuck. And so there is just wow. an absolute ton of information that can be, yeah. you know, garnished from these tags. And That's so, so exciting, man. Yeah. No, it's yeah. What What are, like, the main things you guys are hoping to, like, learn? So, like, what are the big things, you know, you, know, you guys would be stoked to see? My biggest question going into this is post-release survivability, right? Right. Because yeah, yeah. on the fly. This is wild. It's a booming fishery. Yeah, they swim yeah. off great. Are they actually swimming off great? Seems to be they are, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's amazing. Cool. Our tags popped off and they're supposed to. So at the very least, that means the fish survived. Right? Yeah. X, up to an X number, like time of fight. Yeah. You know, it's Correct. like we know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and the it's thing cool. is too, and I don't know if we mentioned, so every time that one of these fish were tagged, we recorded every single thing from, and I think okay. Joe had mentioned this, you know, length, you know, t- yeah. time and, and everything like that. So we had a yeah. good start like good baseline of starting data, data yeah. to where we knew, okay, later on when we re- hopefully when we recover the, the tag and the tag data, okay, yeah, this is, you know, this can be used to look at the history of, of that fish and of that tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so like survivor, survivability, uh, based on catch and release practices is your kind of main 
thing, Jeremy. That was my biggest question going into this. But then, you know, the curiosity factors there of where do they go? You know, yeah. what? Yeah, that's the yeah, thing. That's that, yeah, what, for me, yeah. that's, for me, that's like, what, where yeah. are they, where they go? Yeah. Like, yeah. I was Why surprised are they to find there? out, yeah. you know, <laughs> you guys don't know where they go. And I was like, how do these guys not know where the Marlin mm-hmm. are going? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's cool. Like, it, it, it's like, it's what, what if they're... Like I said, we're, we're... <laughs> where, Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What if they're going to like you know, Australia yeah. or something? You know, it's like who who knows? I mean, what's really cool, and again, I sound like a broken record, but we are still learning mm-hmm. yeah. about these fish, yeah. and you know, it just happened to be that you know we had opportun- opportunistic tags that we could bring along, so we could do further research on this, and then we yeah. had a great partner like Costa that to invite us to do something like this. That we had a great community that was really amped to really be mm-hmm. a part of this and really take care of what and understand the mission as well i think mm-hmm. like i said it, it worked out so incredibly well um mm-hmm. and the fact that we're getting you know we're starting to get some of the data back yeah. it's it's, it's yeah. incredible that's yeah, cool the community's involvement and their their appreciation for the sustainability of the resources that they have right they know yeah. it's a special area of course they're there i mean I was there for yeah. 20 minutes and realized how, <laughs> yeah. how amazing this yeah. area was. I could imagine being <laughs> yeah. from San Carlos. Um, yeah. But so, yeah, I mean, we got our, our short-term tags back. We have, there were some eight-month tags that were deployed. We know, I know data has come back from that. We haven't, that's nice. not processing yet. Um, one of the, actually, I'm almost 100% certain that one of the tags that's in that, uh, or one of the, one of the tagging events that's in the eight-minute uh, clip is one yeah. that popped off to the day 10 months later like it was programmed. Shut up. Oh, no way. And you know, Jeremy, that never happens. Almost That's never awesome. happens. You know? That's news to me. That is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. I was yeah. That, and I was uh, actually Jim That's Crumb's so cool. Poly, we, we were That's talking some of the data. And That's like, so cool. This tag just popped That's off. That's so like, cool. I think that was Dave's tag. And so I went back it to things. I'm like, I think that might be in the video, actually. Oh, my God. But That's like, so oh, rad. Cool. And so that's obviously not through process. You know, this, it was sent back to the company and that's they have epic. to do their, their magic to it. They're in, in it now, yeah. And then uh, we still have some 12-month tags that are deployed. And, you know, sometime mid-December, hopefully we'll get data back from those too. It's it's pretty amazing too. Like, again, sidebar, just because I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But it was just really interesting because that first day, and I don't know if Joe, yeah. t- Joe had told you, but we were almost skunked that first day. Yeah, they were yeah. saying the first day was like, Ooh. First day was yeah. well, 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 tough. Uh-oh. For the record, I wasn't there the first day, so I had nothing to do with it. That's what it was, oh, There you go, man. <laughs> Jerry shows up, all of a sudden he's <laughs> taking shots and catching fish. They're starting to, they're trying to blame, blame me, and then like Jeremy's there, and like, oh, we're taking Jeremy fishing all the time now. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> but what was really neat was like about the post-release mortality and like thinking about all these different cool yeah. things is what was really neat the next day is that we, mm-hmm. I think it was either Perrin, Wiley, or Nick was in the water and they saw, or someone had taken a picture of our satellite tech fish. It was oh, the cool. next day they saw the wow. same striped marlin that was tagged. Right. And I was wow. like, doing its thing. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. it was like, what? Like, you never yeah, see. What are the odds of that? Yeah. It, it's incredible, right? Like, yeah. It's great. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's There's so many cool things about that trip. And I'm sorry, I'm totally like gushing about it, but. No, I, no, I just makes me wish I was yeah, there. Exactly. Thanks a lot, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is such a fun, yeah, it's just like to think there's a fish or fish swimming around right now with tags, you know, in them that could pop off in December. And it's just like really neat thought, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I'm stoked to hear, you know, it would be cool to hear after the data's, data's process to, you know, what, yeah, what, like, whatever he learns. I think, like, I, I think you that's know. the goal, too, is like, you know, Costa – Coast is really innovative and Joe and, and Hannah and the entire team, they get it right. Like mm-hmm. they, they totally get the uh, totally. creation aspect, the community aspect of it. And yeah. this was, you know, this was an epic trip by all, by all, by all numbers, right. By all words. I forget what the analogy is or what the idiom mm-hmm. is there, but, mm-hmm. but it wasn't just an epic trip, right. It was, it was a, it was a point A to a point Z. It just wasn't a point A. Right. Mm-hmm. There was yeah, there's right, yeah. multifaceted factors that will continue for years, really. Right. Yeah. If you think about it, mm-hmm. um, they yeah. understand it. You know, they understand it from that community conservation science aspect of it. Um, and we yeah. we can't thank them enough for having us 
be a, be a part of it. Really. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Oh, it's yeah. wicked. It's cool when marketing initiatives like uh, like actually turn in like people actually the people behind them are actually like genuinely yeah, passionate about exactly Ver- you know what I mean yeah. like, an ad like Joe and Hannah are like we know that they are yeah. Yeah. they really do love mm-hmm. this stuff and yeah it's cool yeah. it's so wild like, how many um, projects they're involved with but that's an, another sidebar but yeah, yeah we've been working with them since 2020 and you know in our little micro community they help us out they're you know they're always busy, busy yeah. helping someone out which is pretty pretty mm-hmm. cool. But that's um, what it's all about, I feel like, too. Like, going back to the original reason of why we're here, mm-hmm. is that's why I think we're all in this community because it is so tight-knit. Yeah. And when, when someone yeah. asks for help, it's it's almost immediate. I almost feel yeah. like, like it's that way. And you don't see this that, cool. that often in a lot of other communities or a lot of other work, you know, arenas. So. Yes, totally. Tight-knit, small world, and then actually having, yeah, yeah, it's benefiting from that. Right. That's cool. All currents connect um, somehow. Oh, whoa, cool. <laughs> Coast is next tag deep. Line. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> deep. deep. Yeah. Jeez oh, Louise. Man. Fuck jeez. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. Just to end this out, round this out. Is there like what? I mean, you you know, you just mentioned earlier, like you're at this conference. You know, the prime minister was speaking about. Um, which is really cool, like the importance of fisheries and stuff. I mean, that's amazing to hear that kind of stuff, you know, coming from um, the prime minister. That's awesome. Uh, outside of the Marlin Fly project, what are some things, other things you guys are working on that you're excited about? Um, you know, I'm sure this is probably tons of stuff, but the Coles notes, a couple little zip zappers, of, uh, you know. <laughs> cool just a couple you're, zips, cool just, things you're stoked about. What are your about. 2024 zip zappers? <laughs> <laughs> Just zip them and just zap them. Come on, let's go. So, uh, like you said in my introduction earlier, I've worked on a you know a zillion different things, and a lot of what yeah. I do now is uh, highly migratory species. So not only the billfish, you know, we look these tagging projects are great. Uh, you know, they're one off, and especially the marlin fly was just phenomenal. But you know, yeah. chances to go out and get other satellite tags out. You know, we do have tags out of blue marlin right now, and we have a handful nice. more to deploy. Um, and more breaking news. Uh, another tag got deployed right before I left. Oh, solid. Oh, love cool. It. Oh, nice. Love it. Johnny and Renee got they one got out one right up. before oh, right before coming down here. That's so, crazy. Um, also do a lot of shark work. And, you know, sharks are a big topic, too. And we do yeah. satellite tagging of those, life history studies, just a little bit of everything. And then... Tarpon? Yeah. So we do. So there is a newly reestablished tarpon charter fishery in mississippi so i tarpon were there oh. it was a big thing back in the day they kind of went yeah and uh i had a chance to go out oh i don't remember exactly how long ago it was now and we had about 200 tarpon in the school around us while we were out there oh, that's a single cool. fish was caught a couple of yeah <laughs> Well, because you didn't have your fly rod right. on you. Oh, yeah. Well done, Anna Method. Well done. Well done. Method and, you know, yeah. conventional tackle. And we ended up yeah. getting a handful of satellite tags out. And uh, That's cool. other colleagues down in the Gulf of Mexico are, you know, they're satellite tagging Marlin. They're putting acoustic tags in Marlin. Or not Marlin, nice. sorry, Tarpon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so they're putting acoustic tags in them now, too. And so that's another big... Another big research area that uh, we're delving into is the acoustic telemetry tags. And so unlike the satellite tags that, you know, collect data nonstop and then transmit to uh, to the satellite system, these acoustic tags are actually surgically implanted in the fish. So, and, you know, there are maybe mm-hmm. the biggest ones are about like that, smallest ones. Too, right. You know, here, so. Yeah. And uh, the fish has to swim by a receiver that we have deployed. But then we get an exact timestamp and location because we know where those yeah. receivers are. And so you can like when really ping, fine yeah. scale movement. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. And so acoustic telemetry yeah. is used in freshwater, saltwater, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of yeah. different species. And so we're, yeah. we have a big push on that. We have some red drum tag. We got some sheep's head that we're tagging now. Some cool. black drum. Um, we've done a handful of sharks and just a yeah. lot of different species. So we do a lot of telemetry work. I specifically yeah. do a lot of highly migratory work, but. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Peter, how about how about yourself? Uh, anything you're super excited yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, we've we've got this one program. Um, we had talked about it earlier, like, you know, learning about baby billfish. Um, yep. And we have this really, you know, a lot of our work is based off of citizen science, which is kind of like a, a catch word recently or a hot, yeah. a hot fad word, whatever we want to call it. Um, and yeah. 
the basis of this uh, juvenile billfish or baby billfish project is basically the same thing is, you know, if you were to encounter, um, you know, a, a juvenile billfish that's, you know, four to six inches, I think it's under, under 10 inches. You very simply just take a picture, timestamp it, let us know where you are. So we can start building yeah. a cache. So we have an understanding, a better understanding, at least a baseline of information, and some data yeah. to where we can pass it along to scientists like Jeremy that can help us yeah. understand the A to Z life stage for these guys. Where do yeah. we find them? Where, what are they eating? You know, what is, what's happening? Why are they showing up in this area? That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we're, we're doing, we're, we're constantly modifying our, our tag and release program. So we have a traditional mm -hmm. tag program as well. Um, that, and traditional tags are basically, um, they're not satellite tags. They don't have any electronics in it. It just provides a, a, a point A and a point B. But it's also it's also super important because traditional tags are one, they're significantly cheaper. They're three dollars versus fifty five hundred dollars per tag. Um and right. anyone can participate yeah. in that. And they're also they can be on a fish forever, right? Yeah. They don't pop off. So a lot of times, you know, going back to the satellite tagging, you know, we'll we try to double tag them to where we can provide Obviously, the satellite ta tagging data on it will come off, pop off eventually, but we'll also still have that traditional tag still on there. And what we're trying to do with that program, which we've had since 1990, I think, Mitch, like you said, is, you know, we're trying to get more people to participate in this in this program and then report the data to us. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of times we'll have, let's say, you know, Mitch, you went out fishing with uh, with Joe um, and you caught a blue marlin, but you forgot to submit that information. That's mm -hmm. absolutely terrifying news for me because if <laughs> if if Aldo, you go out fishing with Jeremy, right, and you happen to recapture that fish, we have no way of right. providing yeah. that information. So what we're trying to do is we have you know this application online now um, at tagbillfish.org where they can go on and just you know put in their information in there of uh, you know of okay. of the fish that they catch. We are yeah. always looking to get more data because the better data yeah. that we have, the better management can happen. And I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of times, especially when it comes not only for offshore, but any recreational sport, specifically fishing, we're always underrepresented because a lot of people just don't understand our community. They don't totally. understand that there are a lot of us out there, men, women, yeah. children. We're spending a lot of money to go various places, silly places, a lot of times to to go fishing for these for these fish, right? And yeah. we always want to be able, to, like I said, that's the basis of TBF is to provide scientific hard evidence to show how much this fish and these fish or these fishes mm -hmm. mean to us and our community. So, mm -hmm. you know. That application is we're hoping will get more people to be involved and to report their data to us, um, as well as we're super busy all the time. Um, like I like you introduced me, Mitch is you know we're part of so many different committees yeah. and so many different things to where we're trying to always make sure we're on the pulse, of understanding yeah. what's happening uh, within our community. You know we go to a lot of events uh, like tournaments just to go on the dock to talk to guys. I think that's always understated like. Being in an yeah. ivory tower is great, but being on the floor, on the docks, that means more yeah. to people to where they can be more relatable with you. And, it, you know, there's that as as much as I love talking with people over the phone and through Zoom, there's something about being able to talk oh, face yeah. to face. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And just and I don't want to see myself when you know. I'm talking to you. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and really, it's just a BS, too. Like. Just to be able to BS at the bar yeah. and mm -hmm. talk about silly fishing stories or whatever we want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there's something That's about fun. that. Too, Absolutely. So. Yeah, and like data can be so um, rough and hidden, you know, like I think it's funny, right? Like just talking to people is maybe like what you're saying is how to get hard data. Yeah. It's like just talking to people about, oh, what'd you catch last week? And, and even like, in, I caught a baby Marlin. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and that's the yeah. whole thing is you're just talking and then someone might overhear it and then, yeah. or they provide some really interesting insight that you didn't even think of yeah absolutely right? yeah and right. i think yeah, that's yeah. a lot of the times like you know we're so focused on certain aspects of things whether it's scientific mm -hmm. advocacy and then you hear like an outsider talk oh why don't you think about this or did you think about doing this and 
oh, I would have never thought about it because you're so sometimes tunnel visioned. And it takes that interaction between people, you know, that that help us spur innovation and technology as well as to help push this foundation further. Like, you know, the application in itself is not rocket science, but it's something mm -hmm. to help someone easily go on a phone and be boop, 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 you know, and just punch that information. Um, yeah. We just want to make yeah. it easier uh, for people. But, you yeah. know, our, our big thing, like I said, in the in the future, you know, are, are working with individuals like Jeremy and doing some of that research. Really, our hope is, you know, to kind of plug some more work that we're going to be doing is, you know, we're hoping to present at some future conferences specifically about the stuff that we're learning and that he kind of alluded to in regards to the Mag Bay trip as well. Um, hmm. To show off some of that information, I'm actually super, super pumped and really anxious to see that data when it comes out because yeah. we don't really know yet what it's going to show. Yeah. And to be able to, you know, have that hard evidence to be like, boom, yeah. here it is, you know, in your face, this is what's happening. You know, fly fishing for Marlin is this, it means yeah. this. So that's what yeah. really, you know, makes me super excited to show not only the awesome science that we're doing together, but the community and how that's going to yeah. affect uh, future generations. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, it's kind of it. neat to think that one day fishing could have, you know, a decade's worth of yeah impact. impact. I was going to say consequences, yeah. but consequences kind of sounds like it has a it's neck. Kind of negative, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, it, it's true. And it, it's so cool. Like, I, and I hope you guys have the opportunity in the future to, to do that. I mean, it was, it was, it, was, <laughs> yeah, it was sick. And, and yeah, to, sick. to be able to have, it's, you know, it's a double edged sword. What I'm about to say It's like, it's awesome mm -hmm. to, to have and create that baseline. Right yeah. to be able to gather all that information at a short burst and get that, and it's never been done before. But at the same point, I look at it in another way of like, man, it's never been done before. You know, yeah. like, yeah, man, yeah. how are we the first ones to do this? How I know, right? Yeah, it's and just it rad. Just, yeah. It's just it, it, super yeah, rad. And it's just that silly discussion that you know Hannah, Joe, and Cody, and whoever else was at Coast at the time said, you know, I've got this mm -hmm. crazy idea. You want to you want to go out fly fishing for, <laughs> for tag about yeah, tag yeah. Tag yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> And then there you go. Yeah. 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 That's super cool. That's cool. Well, you guys have super cool jobs. Um, Very cool. That's for sure. Be, and, be. Uh, and yeah, you know, like, thanks for being the voice of, uh, of Stripe Marlin, Marlin, but also, you know, all fish. I think that's, that's uh, really admirable and, and really cool. And, um, and we much appreciate it. And also you both coming on the show tonight. Have fun in the Bahamas. Um, <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> which I don't think yeah, that we'll, needs to be we'll, said. We'll try. We'll try. Yeah. yeah. All right. How much time do you have yeah. left? Let's enjoy. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I have to leave in a day or two. But okay. no, he's here. I'll be here the rest of the week. He's here all week, so oh, we'll, nice. we'll take a couple. Nice. Jeremy's here all week, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love it. I guess it's that like shameless plug time. Like, where can people find either you or your research or? The Billfish Foundation. Oh, yeah. How can people how get involved at people, like what site? How could people get involved? Yeah, so um, um, you know, yeah. we have we have our page with the university. It's you know University of Southern Mississippi Center for Fisheries Research and Development. We pop up. We have our Instagram. I think it's just USM CFRD. Um, we have like Peter was also saying we have a tag release program too, but it's inshore fish. And so if you're local in the Gulf of Mexico and you catch triple tail cobia um trout Delicious. redfish like we have a tagging program if you're interested reach out to us and uh just you know google my name and usm i want to tag right fish up. let's go tag some fish <laughs> man. you know yeah, let's go take we fish, got man. to we got to as a side note mitch and i got to fish with a, a bonefish tarpon trust um biologist and yep. uh who's Which one? uh ross dr He's great. Um, Ross, Ross I think he's, I think he's actually at the conference right now. So I had a good I'd be surprised if he oh, wasn't. Yeah. Ross, he's a cool, he's a really cool super dude. Nice. All yeah. those guys at BTT are great. Yeah. They're super smart. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, BTT people are great. Like Mark and stuff that people yeah. we got to meet. And they're great. But yeah, you know, we had the, we did not connect with the bonefish in, in Biscayne, unfortunately. I think we only even saw one, but um uh, but Ross had his had his equipment out, and I was like, "Oh fuck, it'd be so cool to tag a bonefish." Yeah, that's cool. Um, but um, but unfortunately, we didn't even see one. So, mm -hmm. 
But we did go out in a thunderstorm, so that might have had something to do with it. Well, I've, got, I've got like a hundred sat tags say, in my basement, man. Yeah. Let's just yeah. let's just go. Let's, let's, say, yeah. let's yeah. get hit by lightning. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll put yeah, all that in the uh, in the links and stuff in the in the show notes. So even after this, if you want to, you know, yeah, send us you. send yeah. us a bunch of links and and stuff, and we'll make sure that everybody has that yeah. available to them. But this was rad. Yeah. This was awesome. Yeah. No, and I appreciate it. I mean, if if they if anyone wanted to look up the Billfish Foundation, it's really simple. You know, Billfish dot yeah. org. Um, I think we're on. A lot of social media. I'm not social media savvy, but we're on Instagram. Yeah. It seems like you're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we'll put it all links to all that stuff in yeah. the show notes too, because uh, yeah, you know, just to your point of people getting involved and how they can help. Yeah, like I said, our that. our whole program, very similar to Jeremy's. You know, it's all based yeah. off of anglers that want to participate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, we we appreciate anyone that wants to come on. Uh, we try to give prizes too, and there, we recognize people at an award ceremony who tag and release the most fish as well. Uh, we try to make it really fun for a lot of these guys, and um, uh, obviously mm-hmm. anglers are a little competitive sometimes as well. So it's, <laughs> yeah, no. it's, it helps bit. to entice uh, <laughs> it helps <laughs> totally. people no. to, to tag a little bit more and provide that data, like I said, which is essential. I love it. Yeah, what love we it. do is going to be done without the community. 100%. You know, in all facets of yeah. our, our jobs. Like it's the community really drives all of this, whether it's participating in the research or just having that conversation of going, hey, I caught a such and such. You know, <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah. I've never seen one before. Well, that's a new line to new line for us to follow up then and see what's going on. Absolutely. So the community yeah. is really, really important in everything that we do in, in fisheries. I love it. Okay, well, yeah, we'll put we'll put all those links in the, uh, in the show notes so that we can keep growing that community and bringing people together. But... Uh, yeah, Peter, Jeremy, thank you guys so yeah, much. Thank, yeah, you thank you so much. much. No, thank you so great. much for for having us. We we do appreciate. It. I'll I'll make sure to to uh, say thank you to Hannah and Joe as well. So uh, for, yeah, they're great. Sure, yeah, yeah. they're so nice of them well, to connect us. And yeah, it's, I guess it's yeah. it's Marlin Month on the SoFly Podcast, yeah. baby. Marlin this month. is yeah. show number two. So Woo, go Marlin. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. Uh, cool. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, guys. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time. <laughs>